Sup, Legends? Your favorite Kuma Duma here, bringing you yet another busted last epoch build. With the recent nerfs to Explosive Ballista, this is the best build, and you know it. We're taking the unkillable Falconer build we made before and make it yet more tanky in this video. Your first thought is probably, but what about the damage? I want to do damage for fuck's sake. Yeah, chill out, hombre. Because not only can we avoid losing damage, we can actually increase it. Sounds too good to be true, am I right? Yeah, but it's true. The build is so goddamn insane that it absolute one-shots everything in this game, while still being able to face tank everything in up to 900 corruptions with ease. Well shit, how does it work then? Previously we were rocking shift and smoke bombs to zoom through content and survive, but we're now using smoke bomb as mobility skill instead. Not only does this increase our survivability, but it also allows us to fly through screens just like we would with aerial assault, thereby combining the best of two worlds. By doing this, we also free up one skill slot, and this is where we are now using decoy. But that skill is shit, right? Oh hell no, my beautiful friend, it's actually insane. This is what it grants us, a taunt, frailty, armor shred, dodge chance, and a ton of crit multiplier, allowing us to take this build to whole new levels of bustedness. When it comes to the other skills, we're still rocking Dive Bomb for that mad DPS through the on-wings of Shadow Passive, allowing our Falcon to keep sending out Dive Bombs when we're getting Shadows, which we do through Smoke Bomb. We also have Falconry, which allows us to use Falcon skills and Explosive Trap to boost the damage of our Falcon. All right, friends, let's dive straight into the gear now, because here we've made a bunch of interesting changes with the goal of making us unkillable. Firstly, I'm rocking the mountain set, so I strongly suggest killing this ugly fuck over and over until your eye sockets fall out and you get something not useless. He can be found in the bumhole of Last Epic, a.k.a. the Lightless Arbor. Enjoy, friends. If you manage to grab some with LP on them, then try to slam some health and dexterity on the helmet, health on the chest, and movement speed on the boots. For all other pieces, there are, of course, stats to prioritize, and stats that can fuck off. Let's start with the defensive stats. As always, with health-based builds, you want to get capped out on endurance. This is mainly solved from the mountain set, however, so you can basically ignore that shit. Same goes for crit avoidance, as well as glancing blows. These needs to get capped, but we're actually sorting that through the skills and passives, so you don't have to worry about that either. When it comes to resistances, our uniques will be sorting that out, but there's also a possibility to grab resistances as blessing, or just grab it on your gear to get capped out. After that, all you actually need to do is stack health and mana region everywhere. Wherever possible, you also want movement speed to be fast as fuck boy, and cooldown reduction to do big damn. Talking about big damn, crit chance is basically sorted as well. If you manage to get one or two pieces with crit chance, then you should have near 100% as long as you stand in a smoke bomb. For the other modifiers, you want to prioritize dexterity, minion damage, and crit multiplier. The reason we want dexterity is that we can benefit from a bunch of passives, which we'll show later. After you've prioritized these stats, bow damage is the best one since our falcon is granted a percentage of it. All right, now there's a few reasons I'm using these set pieces. Firstly, the helmet is actually busted, granting us near 300% crit chance. The chest is also busted, granting immunity every 15 seconds. And lastly, the boots allows us to stack up endurance threshold through our dodge rating. And in this build, we'll have a shit ton of dodge rating, allowing us to get the endurance threshold to our entire health bar. All of these pieces also have plus attributes, which we take advantage of with Red Ring of Adleria. This ring is decently rare, but can be easily target farmed using both Circle of Fortune and Runes of Ascendance. These grant us 10% damage reduction each, 
so having two is nasty good. For amulet, I'm using the Omnis. This one doesn't seem to be that rare, but getting one without dog shit stats are more rare. It drops from the shady Oreo dealer, also known as the bumfuck wasting all of my monolith stability. And if you can't find a decent one, then try to grab some resistances and minion damage. I was fortunate to find one with one LP and grabbed Mana Region here, but you can also move the Mana Region to your relic. For the weapon, you want to be using the Talons of Valor. A 3 LP can be found fairly easily if you target farm them, and it's definitely worth to do so. This thing is completely busted, with every stat being perfect. You should also try to slam the same stats as I'm using here. When it comes to the quiver, you want one that has crit multiplier as implicit. Other than that, minion damage and bow damage is perfect, and then it doesn't hecking matter. Simply grab some armor shred, or if you need more resistances, then this is a good spot to get those capped out. Now for the belt, this one is absolute perfection. I'm most likely never replacing this one, so try to get something as close to this as possible. The most important stat is Mana Region, as this build will be quite mana hungry when you're spamming abilities a lot. As gloves, Ravenous Void is absolutely broken. No, really. It's quite literally broken El Mao. Whenever you teleport somewhere, the gloves bug out and grant you double the Void Barriers. One of these Void Barriers grants 5% damage reduction, which is insane. We're also using these as the stats on this thing is perfect. You can use these for every non-low health build, so it's definitely worth target farming. To get them, you either want to kill the boss in the last ruin, or spend all of your runes of ascendance. Or in case you're in the Merchant's Guild, you can sell all of your assets and whip out your credit card. While you're target farming for these, and lastly, we have the Relic. Ideally, you would get a Gambit here, but since it always gives us the most dog shit stats possible, you can also grab a relic with the same stats as I'm using. Just swap the implicit for crit chance and you're Gucci. Nice one, friends. I also promised to show you a wombo combo big damn setup, so here it is. By swapping to Morning Frost as well as swapping rings and chest for a damage setup, you can double to triple your damage, which is pretty goddamn fun. Ranks to Dive Bomb is absolutely broken for damage, and you can get this on your chest. It's pretty fucking difficult getting two LP core of the mountain, however, so I'm still suggesting you prioritize health here if you can get some LP on it. Well, that's the gear. What about the idols, then? Well, that's pretty damn easy. Just grab health everywhere, and you're good to go. You can also pick up the resistances that you're lacking here, since getting idols with double health on them are pretty rare. And finally, we have the blessings. Here we have a few options, so get your dick out of your hand and listen up, damn it, because it's important. On my Black Sun Blessing, I'm currently using Void Resistance. This is only due to my Omnis having a god-awful role. You can get Crit Multiplier here, which would boost your damage by a fuck ton. Yeah, I know, right? Even more damage? I can't believe it. In the Reign of the Dragons, you also have some options. Ideally, you would use Crit Avoidance here, but if you found gear with Crit Avoidance on it instead, then you can easily get all resistance here instead. Heading into the Spirits of Fire, we have yet two options. What the hell, right? For Big Dam, there's but one option. Minion Damage. If you for some reason are not capped on Endurance, however, then you can get it here as well. And lastly, the Age of Winter. Here you have... Yeah, you guessed it. Two options as well. If you're not using Morning Frost, then Bulwark of the Tundra is the way to go. If you're only here for the big dick damage, however, then you can grab the physical resistances instead, since Morning Frost lowers it. Oh, that was a lot. Let's put on our sombrero and chill out for a sec. Ah, yeah. Link in the description, by the way. All right, friends, great job so far. Let's check out my awesome skill trees now. We'll focus on the passives that actually change how our skills work, because who gives a shit about boring-ass nodes, am I right? Yeah. Firstly, we have the Explosive Trap. 
Here we have a bunch of nodes that increases our traps and reduces the mana. Boring. This one's sick, though. It's what allows us to use Talons of Valor as it makes our explosive trap into a bow skill. It's also way more efficient since it increases the range of explosive trap by a shit ton. On the left side, we have a bunch of nodes that, yeah, you guessed correctly, increases our damage. These nodes are extremely important, however. First, we have smoke traps. By using this, our explosive traps grants us Dusk Shroud. And what the fuck is Dusk Shroud, you may ask? Well, it's a buff that increases our dodge and chance to get glancing blows. It's also the dodge from this node that increases our endurance threshold via foot of the mountain. The other interesting node is this one, Sky Signal. It's quite simple. By detonating explosive traps, our falcon gets unlimited amounts of physical penetration. Like my dick, am I right, folks? No? Okay. Next interesting skill is decoy. Most nodes are damn interesting here, so let's take a look at them one by one. First we reduce its mana, and then we can grab Sonic Detonation. By grabbing this, we get three frailty stacks as well as Armor Shred for a total of 18% damage reduction and 300 Armor Shred. Yummy. We then grab Warning Sound, of course, so that we get 30% movement speed. We can't forget Ear Shatter either, granting us yet more Armor Shred for our beloved bird. After that, we grab these so we can get two into the shadows for an easy 200 dodge rating while decoy is up. And we then finish with ambush, which converts our dodge rating into crit multiplier. There's an extremely important caveat here though, let's check it out. As long as you're running and spamming explosive traps, you can get up to 100 crit multiplier here. But if you're standing still, then our dodge is converted to endurance threshold. So what's the caveat? Don't stand still for fuck's sake. Not when you're trying to get the decoy buff at least. Well, that's the decoy. Let's check out falconry now. Firstly, we have falconer's journey. This is one of the reasons we want to stack a shit ton of dexterity since it buffs our falcon that is. Down here, we have some extra damage as well. And then we have falconer's mark. It basically marks enemies whenever our falcon hit enemies, which we can then take advantage of. It grants us movement speed and attack speed via Wake of Wings, and it also allows us to give our damage buffs to the falcon, which he desperately needs. On the right-hand side, we have some damage as well as a way to instantly kill bosses under 16% health, simply by using falcon strikes. By grabbing these three passives, we also give our bow damage as well as crit chance and crit multiplier to our falcon, making these skills absolutely mandatory. All right, let's take a look at Smoke Bomb now. But first, drop a sub for fuck's sake. I'll just drop this video here while I'm waiting. Nicely done. Let's go. Smoke Bomb is how we'll summon shadows in this build. And by getting shadows, we can get more dive bombs. To do this, we need the Umbral Assault right here. After that, we want to make our Smoke Bomb into a mobility skill. We do this by grabbing Escape Tactics as well as Cloaked Incursion. This also halves our Smoke Bomb cooldown, which is sick. Other than that, we also get some interesting nodes here. Moonlight Bomb allows us to get 100% dodge chance every time we use Smoke Bomb as well as 300 ward. And lastly, Cleansing Steam. This is mandatory if you're using the Ravenous Void Gloves, for example, cleansing off the debuff every time you Smoke Bomb. Finally, we have the Dive Bomb. These nodes decrease the cooldown of Dive Bomb as well as reduce mana cost and cooldown of Dive Bomb as well as increase the duration of Smoke Bomb, which is nice. Here we have some more damage, and then we get to the good stuff. All of these nodes are fucking sick. Wings of Shadow is used to send out dive bombs onto our shadows, 
which allows for three more dive bombs. Not only that, though, we also grab Dancing Shadows here, which doubles the amount of dive bombs. Here's another caveat, though. If you want to use Dive Bomb and Falconry Strikes at the same time, you need to grab this node. Birds aren't real. So if you see any more dumb fucks saying that Dive Bomb is bugged while pressing both skills, tell them that they can suck it. It's shit, though, since our damage is reduced, so fuck that LOL. Well, will you look at that skill tree now done? Nice. I'm going to throw in some big brain secret text now before checking out the passives, because why the hell not? The first one being maxed out, Endurance Threshold. While spamming explosive traps, we are granted a shit ton of dodge rating. The tooltip was previously bugged, so I couldn't show this in the previous video. It's now fixed, however, and check this out. We stack up our dodge rating via Dusk Shrouds, and then we stand still to proc foot of the mountain. You can now see that our whole health bar is maxed out with Endurance Threshold, granting us 60% damage reduction. The second cheat being the Ravenous Void Gloves. Use this if you want, but if you teleport to somewhere in the campaign and then re-enter your monoliths, then you can get six stacks of Void Barrier before fighting a boss, for example. Pretty useful. This is only useful if you don't drop your stacks before the fight starts by standing still, though. This is due to this proccing whenever we max out our Endurance Threshold via the boots, which kind of sucks. All right, I think we're ready to check out the passives now. The Rogue Tree is boring as shit, but it gives us some decent dexterity, health, dodge rating, and damage reduction. The Blade Dancer passives are only used so that we can max out our Glancing Blows with ease. It also grants us some dexterity, which is always welcome. Just like you are welcome to my videos, you goddamn legend. In the Marksman Tree, we grab Draining Arrows for some attack speed, as well as some easy healing whenever we shoot our arrows. Now here is where the good stuff is. Firstly, the passive bonus is yet another reason we want to stack a shit ton of dexterity. And then, we have some health and dodge rating via Wilderness Scout, and then some damage from Handler. We only grab five points here, however, as it's mainly for the increased base crit chance we want. We then pick up Agile Hunt for the dexterity, since we don't give a shit about throwing damage. To buff our Falcon some more, we have Ranger's Mark, granting our arrows a chance to buff the meal damage by one. Only one point here needed, though. Can't forget Tactician either, which buffs our Falcon a whopping 18 melee damage. Heck yeah. Deflect and Weave gives us some more glancing blows, and Coordinated Fade gives us a free dodge every 10 seconds. We also have Evasion Tactics here, granting us both damage and defensives. By grabbing this, we can also get Relentless Talons, which both increases the damage of our bird and allows it to heal us, which is nice. And we also need intuitive connection, of course, because not having falcon strikes and dive bomb instant sucks a big, fat, juicy 10-incher. Needle-like precision gives yet more damage, and poise is the last glancing blow passives we're using to reach that glancing blow cap with ease. Stymphalian Feathers is an interesting one, granting both armor from our dexterity and armor each time our falcon hits enemies, making us tankier the longer a fight continues. And then we have our last two passives. Finesse Them gives us a capped crit avoidance with ease, as it gives us 35% crit avoidance. By using crit avoidance in the blessings, we don't have to give a shit about capping it. It also heals us a ton especially from Falcon Strikes. Now, Tailwind is actually insane, granting us all the defensives and movement speed that we need, and also double them whenever our bird hits stuff. Hell yeah. Great job, friends. We only have one thing left now, how to get hecking good. While you're breezing through monoliths, the gameplay loop is goddamn easy. 
All you do is bash your head on the fucking keyboard Lomao and press every button on cooldown. Decoy should however be saved for elites, or when you need to do big damn, since we can't sustain our mana if we spam every button. If you're fighting large packs of enemies, you can stand still for that insane endurance damage reduction. Now to the more interesting part, the bossing. You should always start by dropping a smoke bomb on the boss to get your friendly shadows up. Most mechanics can be face tanked, but there are some dumbass one-shot mechanics from the shade etc that need to be avoided. I usually go AFK while decoy is on cooldown then and just jump around with my smoke bomb for that 100% dodge. Whenever decoy is off cooldown however, I jump in with my smoke bomb and start spamming buttons again. And finally, when the boss is on 16% health, you press Falcon Strikes and it dies. Pretty damn easy, right? Yeah. And that my friends is all for this guide. Stay shredded kings and I'll see you in the next one.